Hello everybody and welcome to another Sports Hub exclusive channel as today I am here in LA and most specifically Inglewood and behind me is the world's most expensive stadium that is SoFi Stadium as I'm about to go there to watch a Copa America group stage match between Mexico versus Venezuela. Now this is the second time that the Copa America has come to the US. The last time of course was the Copa America Centenario back in 2016 but unlike the last Copa America where it was more of a celebration in terms of the Copa America tournament. This tournament actually counts as the actual Copa America. I believe this is the 48th edition of the Copa America and just like the last Copa America Centenario uh, this Copa America will also not only feature the 10 Combo team but also CONCACAF opponents. In fact uh, pretty much almost half of these teams are CONCACAF opponents and six of these 10 teams are CONCACAF opponents coming into this tournament. Now in terms of this game itself it is a group stage match in group B and it's actually the second match day between both of these teams in group B and both of these teams definitely got off to a good start in terms of their group stage play as both of these teams were able to win their opening group stage win with Mexico winning 1-0 against Jamaica and Venezuela was able to win 2-1 against Ecuador and that means that whoever wins tonight will actually punch their ticket into the round of 16 so I expect this should be a very competitive game between both of these teams but yeah let's us now walk to that stadium right there and find out if that is the case. So as I said I am now walking to SoFi Stadium and by the way right next to SoFi Stadium is the legendary Kia Forum which is where the LA Lakers used to play before they moved to Crypto.com Arena, although I don't think that arena is called that anymore. But as you can see, that is the world's most expensive stadium, and I definitely believe it because look how massive that is. I mean, that is just a giant stadium. I cannot wait to get inside the stadium. So as we're now getting closer to the stadium, you can see there's a lot of street vendor here. He's selling hot dogs, selling merchandise and stuff. Now, of course, I'm going to be going inside the stadium in just a bit. Actually, uh, I don't think it's open yet because I think we still got about 20 minutes before the gate open in two hours. So I think that kind of gives me a time to check out around the stadium. You know, there's a, a man-made lake somewhere around the stadium and I think it's this way. So I'm going to go check it out before going inside to the stadium. You can see there's a lot of people already waiting at the entrance. Cannot wait to get inside the stadium. seen in a stadium where just outside the stadium you can see there's SoFi Stadium in the background but there's this man-made waterfall and lake here. You can see some seagulls there obviously eating some fish there. And this is definitely one of the coolest features too and you know, when you build a stadium like SoFi Stadium that as I mentioned many times it's the most expensive stadium it's about five billion dollars you know you have to include some feature that you should never see at any stadium and any stadium can say that they have a man-made lake and a man-made waterfall right in front of the entrance. So we have made it inside the stadium. As you can see, this is a huge pavilion right here. This is the American Airlines Pavilion. We've got a little stage right here. Some beers to buy there. We're going to make our way up here in the stadium and actually see the stadium in its hole. So this is my first view inside the stadium. And I'll the pitch and look at that oh my goodness look how massive this stadium is I mean look at the stands I mean it just keeps going up and up I think there's like five or six tier that is going up all the way up to the roof and then of course you got the best feature of SoFi Stadium or at least one of the best feature of SoFi Stadium that of course is the Halo scoreboard now obviously the Halo scoreboard is not an original design uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta actually was the first one to do so but yeah, just an absolute amazing design here of the Halo scoreboard. And it's such a big inspiration that even Real Madrid, when they renovate the Santiago Bernabeu, they also introduce a Halo scoreboard just like SoFi Stadium does. Actually, Miami just stand in here and watch the whole game from here because, you know, I know my seat is a 100 level down there, but this is a very good view 
of the action down there on the pitch. Now the Venezuelan player have come on to the pitch to do their pre-game warm-up. Over there, see the Mexican goalkeeper already doing their pre-game warm-up and just then. See the Mexican player come on the pitch to do their pre-game warm-up and I expect it should be very loud here inside SoFi Stadium, especially for the majority of Mexican fans here in the stands. into this game, it's still scoreless between Venezuela and Mexico. I remember earlier I said that I get a good view of the pitch from where I'm standing here in the free to bubble. Yeah, I take that back because the issue here at SoFi Stadium is because of the fans sitting in front of me. Every time when they they're stand up or even just try, trying to uh, ban, uh, ban the wall forward, I just can't see the action whatsoever. So most likely in the second half, I'm going to have to make my way back to my seat in the 200 level. And one other thing I've also noticed is that there's actually quite a bit Venezuelan fans in the stands. I mean, still, majority of the fans here are wearing green, are supporting Mexico. But there's definitely a good contention of Venezuelan fans. And, you know, the other thing I also noticed is that there are definitely some empty seats here at SoFi Stadium. Now, I'm not sure if this is your typical late arrival LA crowd that we usually see. And also, I have no idea why Comi Bowl decided to schedule this game at a 6 p.m. on a Wednesday in LA. Like, that's probably one of the worst times you can schedule a, a game uh, here in LA. But, you know, despite the fact that there are some empty seats, the atmosphere has been absolutely electric. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
half hour play in this game. Still scoreless between Mexico and Venezuela, but there's no doubt Mexico has started to take control of this game. They're definitely having the majority of the possession, and they definitely created a couple of chances, but again, the finishing is just not there for them. Uh, the final third play at time have just not been for them either. Coming together right now between both teams. You can hear the fans' displeasure there, but we'll see if we're going to maybe get the opening goal here in the last 15 minutes. I mean, it just feels like you know if Mexico continue to maybe keep this pressure and maybe they can just find that final goal and find that finishing, they could potentially take the lead before he had to halftime. So it's halftime here at SoFi Stadium. I'm not sure if you can hear me right now because apparently they're playing a song right now and the Mexican fans are basically loving it and singing along with it. But at halftime here at SoFi Stadium, it's scoreless between Mexico and Venezuela. And, you know, so far I think Mexico has kind of been the better team, at least in the first half. They kept most of the possession and they definitely had some opportunity. I think the final third for them maybe needs to be a little bit better Luster at time in the final third, whereas for Venezuela, it seems like they are elected to use the counter attack to swing most of the attack. They did have that one opportunity where Solomon Rondon actually found himself in on goal, and again, I think he must have clipped on the right side of the post, but that probably is the closest we have seen anyone have scored in this game. So let's see if we go here in the second half as we've got about five and a half minutes before we get ready to start the second half. We play an hour into this game, and it's Venezuela now taking one nothing lead over Mexico, and they of course scored by the spot just a couple of minutes ago. I didn't really get a good look to see whether or not, indeed, that was a penalty, but nevertheless, Solomon Rondon buries that to get Venezuela a one nothing lead. Really has come out flat here in the second half. They really don't carry that momentum that they had in the first half with some of those chances. And now it's going to be interesting to see how they'll battle back in the last 30 minutes because of this resort stand. Venezuela is going to be moving on into the round of 16. second minute now still one nothing in favor of Venezuela Mexico started to put a little bit more pressure started to have more of the possession but and the final third it's been poor for Mexico here in the second half I mean 
so many bad touches in the final third. So a lot of indecision in the final third. But we'll see whether or not they can clean that up because, again, as I said, Venezuela, they win this and hold on to this lead. And moving on is the round of 16. We want to say thank you to all the fans for attending tonight's match of the Football Copa America USA 2024 group stage. Damas y caballeros, la asistencia para el partido de esta noche es 72,773. Mexican fans leaving, some from beers, I'm not sure if those are Venezuelan fans celebrating or Mexican fans frustrated of what is going on. So, so one beer can made it onto the pitch. So just finished here at SoFi Stadium as in the end it's Venezuela with one nothing win over Mexico and with this win not only they once again are at the top of group B in the standings but they have now punched their ticket to the next round of the Copa America as they're now into the knockout round and really you know when you look at how this game has in you know in the first half I thought Mexico was the better team and they definitely create a couple of chances to get that opening goal and couldn't do so but coming out of the second half I mean Mexico just looked really flat and Venezuela took advantage of it creating some pressure and eventually winning themselves a penalty and convert to make it one nothing uh, Mexico did eventually wake up but again they just look very sloppy whenever they get into the final third uh, they did got themselves a late penalty really uh, late into this game uh, by a VAR call but even then they couldn't take advantage of it as uh, they missed the penalty area it was just not a good uh, penalty taken there by that Mexican player and ultimately uh, if you are missing chances and not being good in the final third and not to mention if you miss a penalty in, in a game like th this magnitude yeah I think thing is pretty clear that Mexico probably deserved to lose this game and Venezuela definitely deserved to move on into the knockout stage but either way hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys do like smash the subscribe button and yeah I of course will see you guys next time with another sports talk exclusive series episode